So here we have a syringe that's designed for enteral use via the GI tract. And here we have a syringe that's designed for parenteral use, not via the GI tract. So it could be intravenous or intramuscular. Now what's the difference? Well, the obvious one here is that this is purple and this is not. So the enteral syringe is marked out with being purple. And when we look at the ends, we can see what the primary difference is between the two. I think you can see here that the this one, the enteral syringe, has a much wider end than this syringe here. Now, why is this? Well, let's suppose we're giving intravenous injections today. And here we have a giving device. And we notice that there's a metal trocar inside which we can remove. And we have a drug here to give intravenously drawn up in this syringe. Now, this connects very nicely up into there. You can see that connecting up inside. It's a tight fit and we can give the drug through there directly into the vein. Or well, alternatively, there's another giving port here, so we can take that off. And we can put the drug into there. Again, nice, nice fit. Or well, we've got another intravenous device here. And again, we see there's giving port, so we can take the tap off the cork off and we can fit the syringe into there quite nicely and we can give the drug. But if we've drawn a medication up into a enteral syringe with the wider end, now we often need to do this because sometimes you'll just give a teaspoonful of medicine but other times you want it to be done more accurately. If you're giving ibuprofen or paracetamol for example to a febrile child you want to give an accurate dose or if we're giving oromorph controlled drugs. So we'll use the enteral syringe so we can get a precise volume of drug. But suppose you're a bit busy and you've got some oromorph drawn up here in the enteral syringe and then you go off and do something else then it's potentially possible that we could give oromorph intravenously. We don't want to do that. But so suppose we pick, pick this up inadvertently. We try to connect it up and we find that because of the wider connector, it's impossible. It's impossible to connect that up. And it's the same with the other device. So while the parenteral syringe fits in nicely, the enteral syringe, again, it's impossible to make it fit. So there we have our intravenous device and this would be into a vein of course here's the vein and we'll have our device nicely secured stop it moving about taped onto the patient's skin now if I've got some drug drawn up in my enteral syringe try to connect it up inadvertently it's impossible can't do it, won't physically fit. But then when I come along with the correct syringe, the parenteral syringe, then that will fit on quite nicely. And then I can give the drug directly into the patient's vein. Controlling the dose quite nicely the rate quite nicely and there we have intravenous drug administration which is going to go off into the systemic circulation. Same with this other type of device going into the vein here and you can see this going through the giving set as I inject it so you can see the drug going through the line there all the way through and then this drug will go directly into the patient's vein and of course preparations we give intravenously must be specifically specified by the pharmacological companies for that administration. A drug which is designed for oral administration as we've said may be 
Calpol to a or paracetamol or ibuprofen to a febrile child. This inadvertent administration would be impossible. So it's one of these never events. This, this should never happen. It should never happen that a drug for oral administration is given intravenously. We always have to give the drug via the right route. And if we do it this way every time using the correct syringe, especially with this nice colour difference, then this never event should never happen. But unfortunately, drugs for oral preparations have been given intravenously on quite a few occasions in different healthcare settings, but this prevents it. So just as a simple thing, but think about the safety and do the same procedures every time to ensure your patient's safety.